that. Mm. Okay. So we were discussing the index notation. Take care. I'll solve one more problem and then I'll go to differential calculus. I'll discuss the, the this uh, operator del first and then we'll come back to the next notation. Take care. I'll discuss divergence, what is divergence and curl, and then I'll come back to this index notation. Actually, I normally I discuss this divergence curl differential calculus first and then go to the index notation, but this time I forgot, I missed it. But take care. anyway, <clears throat> so um, index notation, right? We were just a minute. Okay, so TK um, will solve one exercise problem. So using index notation again, you have to verify this. E dot B cross C equals to just a minute, I guess. <clears throat> okay, so you have to verify this A dot B cross C is same as B dot C cross A and this is also same as C dot A cross B. Okay, so any of you can anyone of you um, try this? Can you can you just write the index notation for the A dot B cross C simplify it and then I try to get back this second term here, write the Gibbs notation for that, and then maybe again further simplify, try to get the, the third term. So just try it once. Guys, Rudransh. Rudransh. Yes, sir. Ha. Tell me how Can to you... write this, how to write the index notation for this A dot, this term, A dot B cross C. Tell me. Need to write the index notation for the B cross C and then hmm. uh, add the dot product again. Okay, so B cross C, how will I write the B cross C in the next notation? B cross C would be B I C B I B. Uh, I'm not really clear on this, sir. B I, okay. Acha. Prabin. Uh, uh, Kabin Kumar. Ajay. You want to try? Mm. Emmanuel. Amrit. Yes, sir. Hi, Emmanuel. Hi. Tell me. How will I write or how to write this B cross C in index notation? C 
sir um, b i cross c i i'm not sure like um acha the Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, ah, Rajesh. Epsilon ij uh, bi okay, cj ek. So you are saying epsilon ij k bi CJ. cj ek. Okay. Ek, okay. you can drop it. Okay. Uh, let's let's drop ek. Okay. Okay. Let's write because many of the other students are not comfortable with this. So let's say I'm, I've written ek. Okay, and then how about and a then, dot this? And you can write a into uh, you can take it as r uh, as previous we took it as r. A r. Yeah. Okay, so I'm writing at the front a r e r, and this is getting dotted with this, right? For the sake of easiness, I'm just writing everything. I'm writing the unit vector. So a r e r dot this. Now what I what we can do is we can move everything, all the scale components at the front. So A R, Epsilon, I J K, B I C J. This at the front, and then I can write E R dot E K, right? Okay, Rajesh. Sir, okay, sir, okay, right. Ah, uh, then after this. After this. Uh, you have to interchange, rearrange, uh, maybe rearrange it. So this will be delta R. Uh, this will be delta R K. Delta R K. And then I have to drop delta R K and replace either K by R or R by K. R by K. Right. So let's say I'm replacing R by K. So it will be A K epsilon I J K B. B I C J. So this is my expression, right? Final simplified one. Okay. Now can I? Okay. How to get back? How? To, okay. So this is my index notation. Write the Gibbs notation for this. Okay. So I have this A K epsilon I J K and B I C J. See. Uh, <clears throat> this epsilon i j k b i c j so if i take this right um achha, no, not not no if i do that i'll get back in, in the same expression let's say i take this one this combination because i have i here i have k here and this is i j k right so this epsilon this i can in this and I can write this write it as epsilon i j k and then b i and a k and then I can write c j. Okay, so if I look at this right, <coughs> see <coughs> this is i b i a k epsilon i j k and this and this epsilon um, um, this epsilon right this is i and k. So this is same as, let's say if I move K at the front, right? Let's say if I change, if I move K from third place to first place, I from first, sec first to second, and J from second to third, it will be K I the same, right? No, no change. And then B I A K and C J. And so this is equals to what? So epsilon K I J, sorry. I J fine. This, this is also okay. So K I J. So K is appearing before I. So this is going to this epsilon K I J times B I A K. This is if I write the the Gibbs notation for this, it will be what? K is appearing before I. So it will be A cross B. And then see, this is J, right? So the J is the index for the resultant vector. And then so I have CJ here. That means this, this uh, the resultant of A cross B is getting dotted with C. Right? So A cross then I can write this 
from here i can also write like this so let's say um, um, i'm writing like this epsilon i j k and then i'm writing a k c j and b i and then this right see this one it's epsilon i j k a k c j so in epsilon j is appearing before k so if i write the index notation for this epsilon i j k a k c j it will be c cross a right and then see the resultant vector the resultant quantity is a vector quantity whose uh, direction is what i and here i have b i that means so i i same right that means the resultant is getting dotted with b so this is my this one is this okay everyone so i am able to verify this using the index notation this a dot b cross c is same as b dot c cross a and also c dot a cross b is this clear guys Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, it can ah. be just. Ah. Uh, sir, here A R uh, B I C J sir and I J K delta R K. Right. Oh. Sir, after this, uh, uh, it will be A K. A K sir and I J K B I C J. So, so see, um, um, we have to, we can drop this. See. i can drop this and sir, replace uh, r by k yes sir r by k or yes, k by r both are fine so this is the here i have replaced r by k so it will be ak epsilon ijk bicj and then i'm just rearranging it that's it so in this part what i have done is i have written epsilon i j k b i a k and epsilon i j k is epsilon i j k is same as so k i j and this is same as epsilon j k i all are same if i if i so here what i have done is i have moved k in the front and here what i have done is k i have moved j at the front so k here k is in third place in this here k is in the first place so from third to first i from first to second j from second to third right all are same no change but if i do like this right if i uh, epsilon i j k equals to let's say if i if i changing places of i and j only let's say i'm writing j i k then i need to put minus sign here okay so i mean this epsilon i j k is same as epsilon k i j and then b i a k and here see uh, uh, um, here uh, this um, k right so k i j so if i look at this term epsilon k i j b i a k see uh the index for b is i index for a is k in epsilon k is appearing before i right k is appearing before i so this epsilon k i j b i a k will be uh, uh, a cross b not b cross a if it is epsilon i k j right it will be b cross a but since it's epsilon k i j it will be Uh, a cross b and see the third index here j j is going to be the index or the direction of the resultant vector right so it's it's like this i mean the the, the resultant i like you can say rj and it is rj times cj so j and j they are same right it's, it's, it's the same index that means there is a dot product so this resultant of this cross product is getting dotted with c clear is there anyone anything it is not clear 
अच्छा ठीक है चलो विल विल सॉल्व मोर प्रॉब्लम्स लेटर है ना व्हेन व्हेन आई व्हेन आई एम डन विद द डिस्कशन और डिस्कशन ऑन दिस द ऑपरेटर डेल विल डू द सेम विल डू सम मोर एक्सरसाइज यूजिंग इन द एक्सप्लेनेशन ठीक है ओके नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू द डिफरेंशियल आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस लिटिल बिट अबाउट द डिफरेंशियल कैलकुलस Okay, so let's say I have a function which is function of x only. I have just one independent variable, right? Then, uh, um, um, so df by dx. What is df by dx in words? If I say, if I write this in words, it would be um, um, df by dx tells me. how f is changing if i move a small if i make a small change in x or let's say ठीक है, so df by dx it tells me how f changes when I change, make change in x, or when I when there is a small change in x. So df by dx, and uh, if you want to make, if you want to know the how much, uh, what is the change in f, you can you can simply multiply df by dx into dx. ठीक है, so this is my df. df is what how what is the change in f df by dx dx is uh, tells me how the f is changing when i move or when i change x by a very small amount so df how to get df df is what how much is the change in f so df by dx into if i do df by dx into D, dx i'll get the df so i mean there is just one independent variable right so from a given point i can move either in this direction or this direction was increasing x or decreasing x direction so if i know the df by if i have the information about df by dx at this point i can tell you what is the change in f if i move a small distance whether it's a positive direction or the neg uh, negative direction i can you are or you will be able to find what is the change in f okay second case let's say i have a function which is function of x1 x2 and x3 right earlier it was x only or x1 only but now i have a function which is function of x1 x2 and x3 so from a given point right i can move either in this direction or this direction or this direction there are this this direction or this direction or this direction i mean i can go in infinite number of directions right here there was only two direction and if i know that uh, if i have the information about df by dx right i can tell you the change in f if i move or if i make small change in x or if i go uh, 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 or if i change the x by small amount okay is case 2 or i have taken another function t which is function of x1 x2 and x3 so there are three independent variable i right so <clears throat> from a given point right i can move either in this direction or this i mean there is no uh, uh, limitation there are infinite number of directions i can go right so question is Uh, if if i have to find what is the change in t right do i need infinite number of uh, derivatives so answer is no if i have the uh, uh, this uh, dt partial t or partial x1 
partial t by partial x2 and partial t by partial x3 at that point if i have those information i can find the change in t right when i am moving uh, from a given point to the other point so uh, dt from the calculus you can write dt equals to partial t by partial x1 into dx1 plus partial t by partial x2 into dx2 plus partial t by partial x3 into dx3 right so what is dt so dt is, is change in t if i move a small distance away from that reference point or from the given point right <clears throat> i'm using the word move move means i'm changing my uh, x1 x2 x3 location take it and uh, so uh, change in t so from the calculus i can write dt is equals to partial t by partial x1 partial t by partial x into dx1 plus partial t by partial x2 into dx2 plus partial t by partial x3 into dx3 right okay i can further simplify this i can write this as partial t by partial x1 e1 plus partial t by partial x2 e2 plus partial t by partial x3 e3 this dot with dx1 e1 plus dx2 e2 plus dx3 e3 right so if i do the dot product of these two so it will be partial t by partial x1 times dx1 e1 dot e1 e1 dot e1 is 1 plus partial t by partial x2 into dx1 into e2 dot e1 so e2 dot e1 is going to be 0 so when i simplify it i'm going to get this right i'm going to get this expression okay uh, so this is equals to this i can write in in the symbolic form i can write like this del dot dl so del right from this i can say del okay so this is called del not delta or sometimes it's called nabla some books will see nabla but no, normally we use the word del okay so del is from this i can write like this so partial by partial x1 Achha. so this derivative i'm writing like this mm -hmm. so del is e1 partial by partial x1 plus e2 partial by partial x2 plus e3 partial by partial x3 so it's like it's an operator like partial by partial x1 or d by dx1 d by dx2 so it's an operator but not but operator and behaves like a vector this is very important so del is an operator but it behaves like a vector okay so uh, this is this and from this i got the definition of del which is even okay i have written in this form so so that you are not confused like this partial or partial x1 is not operating on e1 so it's del is an operator but behaves like a vector so it's the component in direction one is partial by partial x1 component in direction two is partial by partial x2 component in direction three is partial by partial x3 okay so it's an operator okay so uh, um, okay Achha, um, i can further simplify this del t i can just few more thing about this expression um, this dt right using the definition of uh, the dot product i can write this as mod of del t okay let's let's 
put the under bar here because it's a vector mm. times dl uh -uh. dl here is your displacement vector right? times cos of theta okay Achha. from by looking at this expression can you tell me from a given point right in which direction should i move to get the maximum change can you tell me so look by looking at this expression so dt is the change in t right del t so del t is called gradient so when this del is operating on a scalar quantity is called gradient so you can say let's say if t is temperature right let's say so del t is called temperature gradient Okay, uh, <clears throat> so my question was from this right, I can write using the definition of del, I can write this expression. Okay, so my question is from a given point, right? I should move or one should move in which direction to get the maximum change. Maximum change means I'm talking about the maximum value of dt. So, uh, uh, cos theta is going to vary. So see, uh, for a given point, right, this delta is going to be same. I mean, the delta is delta t is uh, uh, delta is. Uh, I mean, it's known to you. And uh, dl, let's say you are moving in the. I mean, the, that dl is also fixed. Let's say you have to move a uh, unit distance, right? Then everything depends upon this cos theta. I mean, dt is going to depend upon the cos theta. So. Uh, cos theta varies from 0 to minus 1 to 1 and its maximum value is 1 and uh, cos theta is maximum when theta is 0. So when cos theta 1 means theta equal to 0. So uh, if I look at this expression right, this is what mod of del t times mod of dl times cos theta. Theta is what? It's the angle between the displacement vector dl and del t. So I can say that if so, so, so depending upon, I mean, by using this theta equal to when theta equal to zero, right? The dt is maximum. dt is maximum when theta is zero right that means i can say that if i move in the direction of gradient i will observe maximum change right see it's del t is what it's it's a, it's a vectorial quantity right so del is operating on t del t is how much del t is what partial t by partial x1 e1 plus partial t by partial x2 e2 plus partial t by partial x3 e3 so this is my del t okay so by using this expression right so from a given point right let's say from a given point my del t will be fixed right and let's say i'm saying that okay i'm my i can move in the infinite number of direction but dl is also fixed let's say i'm moving only unit distance so both of them are fixed only the the thing uh, the variable which is changing here is cos theta so in cos theta is maximum when theta is zero so i can say that i'll get 
dt maximum and dt will be maximum when theta is zero or i can say the same thing in words that if i move in the direction of gradient i will i will observe the maximum change or i'll get the maximum change so dt will be the maximum when i move in the direction of gradient okay so gradient is what here it's partial t by partial x1 e1 plus partial t by partial x2 e2 plus partial t by partial x3 e3 so this is my temperature gradient it's a vector right that means it will be having a, a direction t is a scalar quantity So it's a scalar just so it's a scalar quantity and del t is a vector quantity vectorial quantity so d t is a scalar quantity so when del is operating on t it will become a, a vectorial quantity it's called gradient so temperature gradient right so <coughs> I mean, by using this, I just made this statement. Okay, Acha. So this del, right? I said del is what in in Cartesian coordinate system. Del is defined as e1 partial by partial x1 plus e2 partial by partial x2 plus e3. So this is in Cartesian coordinate system. Okay, for a uh, for a spherical and circular, we will see later. Okay, how I we will get the definition of del for circle uh, for a spherical and cylindrical coordinate system later. So this is the definition of del in Cartesian coordinate system. Okay, now. So we have seen that when del operates on a scalar quantity, it's called gradient, right? And you get a vectorial quantity when del operates on a gradient, a scalar quantity. Now, how del operates on vectors? Okay, so del there are two ways first via dot product second via cross product okay so this del when del operates on the scalar quantity it's called the resultant quantity is called gradient and the resultant quantity is a vectorial quantity when del this del and uh, nabla operates on a scalar quantity it's called gradient for vectors it operates via dot product and it, it operates in two ways first via dot product second via cross product Okay, so as I said before, del it's an operator, but it behaves like a vector. It's an operator like d by dx or partial by partial x. Okay, it's an operator, but it has all the properties of a vector. So for a vectorial quantities, it operates in two different ways. First, by dot products, dot product is a dot product by dot product, and second by cross product. So del when it is when it operates on a uh, 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 vectorial quantity, right? Uh, so let's say V via dot product is called divergence. When it operates on a um, on a vectorial quantity via dot product, and when it operates on a vectorial quantity via cross product, it's called curl. We can be any vector function. 
इट कैन बी एनी वेक्टर फंक्शन ठीक है इट कैन बी एनी वेक्टर फंक्शन नॉट जस्ट वेलोसिटी इट कैन बी एनी वेक्टर फंक्शन सो डॉट प्रोडक्ट वेन इट्स इट्स ऑपरेटिंग ऑन वेक्टर क्वान्टिटी वाई डॉट प्रोडक्ट कॉल्ड डाइवर्जेंस वेन इट्स ऑपरेटिंग ऑन वेक्टर क्वान्टिटी वाई क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट कॉल्ड कर ओके सो वी डॉट डेल इट्स आई मीन यू कैन नॉट राइट v cross del this is wrong because it's an operator right so it has to appear before this your vector quantity and v dot del this is also wrong okay this it's an operator actually okay so it's an operator del is an operator It has to be del dot v or del cross v. Okay. It it cannot be v cross del or v dot del. So since del is an operator, it, it will be appearing before your vector uh, quantity. Okay. Acha. So about this divergence and curl, right? So physically divergence. is related with see both the quantities are related with the change in your vector function theek hai so for a vector function there are two things like for a scalar function right it has only the magnitude but scalar vector function you have both you have a, a direction as well as magnitude so divergence it's related with change in magnitude and curl change in direction both see i have del there right so that means d by dx1 d by d partial by partial x1 partial by partial x2 partial by partial x3 so it's all related with both the quantities are related with change so in gradient when the del operating on a scalar function so there will be just one there will be just magnitude right for in case of scalar quantity but in case talking about this divergence or when we are talking about this del right so <clears throat> a divergence so i said del operates on uh, vector quantities in uh, via dot product and via cross product so <clears throat> when i am saying it's via dot product it's called divergence and divergence is related with the change in magnitude so when you go from one point to another point divergence is related with how much is a change in the magnitude when you are going from one to one point to the another point and curl is about the change in direction when you are going from one point to another point what is the change or how the direction is changing so that information is contained in curl and how much the magnitude is changing of that vector is contained in the that information is contained in the divergence theek hai okay uh, uh, <coughs> to give you little more Tell about the divergence, right? Let's say I'm observing divergence of a velocity field. Okay. Divergence of a velocity field. So velocity is my vector function. Okay. So uh, uh, to visualize the divergence, right? Uh, <clears throat> let's say I am uh, 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 standing at uh, like. Uh, uh, <clears throat> at the one end of maybe uh, think i forget about the end so uh, there is some flow is going on okay there is some flow field fluid is flowing and then uh, at a given point right at one point um, i am putting some sawdust sawdust why i am saying sawdust because sawdust is not going to disturb the flow field right so <clears throat> um uh so if that saw dust right uh, it if it spreads i mean i mean spreads means uh, 
स्प्रेड मीन्स ओके अच्छा ठीक है फर्स्ट फर्स्ट आई आई ड्रॉ द डाइवर्जेंस वेलोसिटी फील्ड विथ जीरो डाइवर्जेंस और नॉन जीरो डाइवर्जेंस एंड कर्ल विथ 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 जीरो कर्ल एंड नॉन कर्ल सो डाइवर्जेंस जीरो डाइवर्जेंस एंड देन आई विल डिस्कस एट एग्जाम्पल डाइवर्जेंस जीरो डाइवर्जेंस सो वेन आई से जीरो डाइवर्जेंस राइट दैट मीन्स this is the example of zero divergence so i have i'm drawing the velocity vectors at couple of locations so i'm drawing the vectors of same length and the direction is also same length is important so it's so this is zero divergence or let's say so length is length of the arrow is same at all the points so this is my um velocity vectors hai na i have drawn velocity vectors so example 1 this is the example 2 so velocity vectors right at all the locations i have taken let's say some some locations some sample locations and then at those locations i have drawn the velocity vectors i can draw the velocity vectors at infinite points right but i have taken some locations and then i have drawn the velocity vectors at those locations and the see at all the locations the length of the arrow is same so the the other velocity field or the velocity vector has zero divergence or the velocity field has zero divergence or it's a zero divergence without velocity field okay divergence free velocity field um uh, uh, and this is the example of non zero divergence non zero divergence means let's say here it's like this here it is bigger it's getting bigger do so the magnitude is changing so or let's say if i take this point hai na let's say that is point that is my point of interest right so for this point the incoming arrow incoming arrow there is a change let's draw it little bigger Hello. And here, if you look, this is my point of so length. I can say that it has has zero zero divergence. And in fact, for this velocity field, for this vector field, right, for all the points. i mean the incoming the length of the incoming arrow and the length of the outgoing arrow both are same so there is no change in magnitude so this vector field has zero divergence similarly this one if i take this point right incoming and outgoing arrow both are same 
but for if i take this velocity this uh, uh, vector uh, field uh, the incoming arrow and outgoing arrow there is change in length so it i can say it has non zero divergence acha It is not audible. Hello. 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 Hello, sir. It is not audible. Am I audible now? Hello. Hello. Hmm. 